You are listening to The Slip Punches Show with your host, Damon Gonzalez, from Latin Box Sports, your boxing champions. Hey, what's up, guys? Good afternoon, good evening. Damon Gonzalez from Latin Box Sports. Happy to be back. We have a nice show this evening. Uh, again, we love what we do, man. Uh, very big shout out uh, to, to Box and Playhouse celebrating a birthday tonight. Uh, we definitely want to give them a shout out. Um, big shout out, uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez uh, just announced his fight tonight. Uh, Canelo's going to be fighting at the Hard Rock uh, Stadium in Miami, Florida. Uh, to, uh, it's going to be a title defense with the WBC. Um, you know, uh, fighters, and that's part of being champions. You know, they have to defend their titles. And, and uh, you know, fans just got to understand that that's just the way the sport goes. So we have we have a special guest we want to bring on the show uh, tonight. I'm wearing uh, this this nice T-shirt. It's the Pines Casino. Pines Casino was located in Fallsburg, New York, upstate New York. And for those of you, of course, that are historians and been around boxing a lot of years, you know that the Pines was the training camp of uh, Sonny Liston. Uh, Sonny Liston held a couple of training camps at the Pines. Uh, where he trained for a couple of his uh, championship fights. So, you know, big shout out to uh, the old school, the Pines, definitely representing Sunday Listen tonight wearing the shirt. So, again, I uh, have a special guest coming on tonight uh, down from San Antonio, Texas. Um, definitely, you know, it's going to be a good show. We're looking forward to talking to him. Uh, he will be fighting in Florida uh, in the next month. So, without further ado, let's bring Raymond Cadenares to the show. Raymond, how you doing, champ? You hear I'm me? I'm doing good. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you loud and clear. How are you? Yeah, good. good. Just um, training. Get this right. You're, you're rocking the Mexican Baseball League hat. Is that correct? No, nah, it's just a series hat, uh, like a World Series hat, like for the it's whole world. Is that the Mexico team? No, no, no. It's uh, no. It's just Venezuela. I like the color. Of the, I like, yeah, I like the color of the thing. That's what's up. How are you, yeah. how are you doing this evening, champ? I'm doing good, man. Just uh, waiting to go to the gym right now in a little bit. I got to be there at 7. My time. Champ, you're fighting in super bantam weight. You have mm -hmm. a record of 18 wins, one loss. Mm -hmm. uh, really nice young career. Uh, you're based out in San Antonio. Yes. Uh, tell us a little about yourself. Tell us a little about your boxing history, fighting in the pros, and uh, what brought you to boxing as a young man? Uh, I mean, what brought me to boxing really was just uh, my dad. It, it was It's a funny story. So my dad used to always fight. You know, he used to always fight. And, and so he, in a sense, he, he told himself, like, I have to show my kids how to defend themselves. So say that one day the the guys that I beat up wanna like get at me, at least my kids uh -huh. can defend themselves. And so that was really the reason. And then um, my dad has a good, a uh, real close friend of his. Um, his son was a IBA world champion. Okay. And so he's basically we call each other cousins and stuff. So him, he's the one who kind of told my dad, you know, hey, like take him to the gym. Uh, and so that's basically mainly why, you know, just. Uh, just my dad really just took us to the gym one day, and at first it's fun. It's funny because I didn't really like it. I, I liked soccer better. That's what I played. I played soccer, and I didn't really like boxing. And my brother was uh -huh. the one who actually uh, was going. And you know, as a little brother, you just kind of follow the older brother. And little by little, I was like, man, like okay, like I like the way they. I was like, I like the way they're fighting in the ring. I was like, I want to do that. And so then the coach was like, you know, how long have you been here? And he's like, I've been here for three months. And I was doing the same thing, just one, two, one, two, one, two. And we were just learning the basics. And he's like, all right, well, show me you can throw a one, two. And I threw it. And I threw it really good. And he was like, oh, man, like, what the? And he's like, all right, well, tomorrow you're going to work with the boxers. And ever since then, I mean, I just stuck with it. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Now, a lot of your career and a lot of your wins and a lot of your fights, you, mm -hmm. you went back to your roots. You went back yes. to Mexico and you fought in Mexico. Yes. Talk about your experience fighting Mexico. Ah, uh, sheesh. It was, it, was, um, it was tough. You know, it was really tough because I come from, my, you know, my amateur background. 
it wasn't uh i would say you know 12 time 15 time you know national champion at the time when right. i was in an amateurs it was only really four tournaments that you could win you know that's really what it was right. you know the jos the silver gloves ringside and the pal that was it and right. so when i ended up saying you know what i want to debut um i had offers but they weren't great offers so i was like you know what well, we got to do it on our own and then I ended up going and fighting in Mexico, and it was probably the best thing that I could do because I was, I was getting experience, I was learning, and all the time I was doing this, it was, in in a sense, on the sidelines. So if I messed up on one fight, I wasn't crucified right. about it. I wasn't put on a torch and said, "Oh man, this guy, he's not gonna do any good. He's not gonna, you know, he he had a problem with with a guy who's he's supposed to be easy. You know what I mean?" And then right. so I, I kind of was comfortable and I got comfortable and, and little by little, you know, I, I started uh, making my way towards the United States. And, you know, occasionally I would fight maybe three fights in Mexico and then I would fight one in the States. And you right. could tell the drastic difference of the experience that I was gaining in Mexico. And so, I mean, it was it was it was beautiful, man. And and I wouldn't, you know, the, either way, you know, the hardships that, that we have to kind of go through. I wasn't getting paid for my fights in Mexico. And, and that's one thing that I already knew going in. I was like, you know, my dad right. was the one paying for the fights and, and getting on the cards. And so uh -huh. he was paying the opponent and he kind of told me like, Hey, I don't have, you know, I don't have the money to pay you, but we're, but I didn't see it that way. I saw it as in, you know, this is, this is money in the bank, you know, like little savings going into the bank that are, is going to help me on the long run. And I mean, sure enough, man, it's, it's helped me uh, tremendously. That's it's definitely it's, it's it's awesome that you went really back home mm -hmm. uh, to really you know sacrifice and work yeah. hard and and get all these fights and I seen tape of you fight I mm -hmm. personally haven't seen you live yet but mm -hmm. I will and we'll get yeah. into that in a minute but the one thing I can kind of pick up and I saw in your style of fight is use a fighter if I wanted to just say okay well this is a boxer this is what I think of him yeah. Um, you have a suffocating style. You yeah. suffocate your opponents with punches. You don't allow them to get off because you're fast with your feet, you're fast with your hands, and you're always the aggressor. Mm. Talk about that style. Talk about when the bell rings, what, what goes off in you, and why do you love doing it? it, it, it it's funny, man. It just I guess it's just something natural that it, it comes to me. Um for my size, I feel like my record doesn't say it, but I mean, I can promise you every, if you go back and watch every single one of my fights, I've hurt the, like every single one of my fighters, even the fight that I lost, I, I hurt the guy. Uh, that fight, I just have the energy to finish him, but I hurt every single opponent. Uh, what was lacking was the experience of, of, of kind of like, I was more worried about getting cut and more worried about headbutts and stuff like that than actually doing my job. And so I, like I've told you, as I progressed, um i've always had that style you know i've always had this style of like if you go back to even my amateur days in 2013 uh -huh. i remember um it was the first year at the u.s championships without headgear for the for i was still a youth but for the older ones it was okay and and uh that year i had knocked out a guy with a body shot i broke his rib and so it's wow. always been it's always been for me natural in a sense of like i've always felt stronger than a lot of the people that i fought so for me, you know, it's been natural. You know, I was I was kind of groomed to to do that style, and I feel also, you know, it's just it's just in my blood, you know, to to be the 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 aggressor and to be the guy that you know, like 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 siempre para adelante, but con la inteligencia, you know, always going forward, but you got to be smart, and so that's always something that I've always taken in to myself was, you know, what I'm gonna be the aggressor, and and and, and just really, you know. I, I have confidence in myself that knowing if I land a good shot, these guys are going down. Yeah, take a minute and, and just, you know, I want to touch on some very, very important. Definitely mm -hmm. congratulating you uh, throughout your young career. You had an opportunity. You had an opportunity as a young fighter that you were able to be in a position and fight for the ABF uh, yes. belt. You fought mm -hmm. for the ABF belt. And congratulations. You, you, you. executed and you won by... Uh, yeah, unanimous decision. So, mm -hmm. you know, great work uh, on Jeremy Lentz and the ABF yeah. giving you that opportunity to fight for that belt. And how gratifying is it knowing that, wait a second, this is really the first step to something in the horizon 
Talk about that. How how gratifying was that for you? Uh, it was that part was was it was uh, something like in a, in a movie. You know, the the guy that I was fighting was an experienced uh, guy. He had fought in in LA. He fought um. Uh, he had fought Nano Rodriguez. He fought um, some guy named Gibson. Uh, of, uh, his, he used to be really good. Uh, his name was Gibson. Keandre Gibson. Okay. Uh, he had fought in a bunch of experienced guys. And um, so going into that fight, I, he, he had done a couple of interviews saying that, oh, you know, I fought better opponents than Ramon. And uh, I feel like, you know, my experience is going gonna, is gonna to beat him. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, like, I was like, all right, you know, I, this is where I show that, like, I'm, I'm at that level as those other guys. And so going into the fight, I was I was doing good. I was doing good. I boxed them, and I did my job, and I, we got a unanimous decision. And, and so that fight was one of those things where it was like, man, you know, like, I could do this. You know, it, like, it really showed me, like, I knew I could always, I knew I had the potential in, in my mind, but that fight was more, like, solidifying, telling me, like, hey, man, like, you're at the level as those other guys. and. Just because you're not there yet, to, todo a su tiempo, you know, todo a su tiempo, every, everything at his time. And so that fight was more like it showed me that I'm at that level, that I could be at that level, which is all taking patience and time. Oh, big respect to you, champ. Big respect. Yeah. Now, let's talk about that word champ, because the reason why I say that, because you are. And the second thing of it, in order to keep it, you got to give it away. Talk mm -hmm. about what you've done in the community, because I know you've been involved uh, with some events in San Antonio, helping mm -hmm. people out out there. And I would love for you to share on that and expand on that. Yeah. So, so, I mean, a few years ago, two years ago, as a matter of fact, last year I didn't do it because of the pandemic. So two years ago, I ended up saying, you know, telling my father, I was like, dude, like, you know, Christmas is coming around and I've always wanted to do an event. I've always wanted to give back, you know, to my main community. Cause I mean, again, you know, my community is not, it's not upper class. You know, if you come to San Antonio, you'll know more or less where upper class is at and we're not, you know, we're like in middle class. And so I was, I told my father, you know, I was like, dude, I want to give back to the kids, you know, because and again, in a sense, the kids are the future and they are the future. Right. They're the future of the, and not so much just, the, you know, my country. No, they're the future of the world, you know, and they're the future of the world. We're already, our time is, I mean, not, no, no, but you know what I'm saying? We're, we're the present. Let's put it that way. Absolutely. And so, I told, I told my dad, I was like, you know, I want to get back to the kids. And so then we ended up, uh, there's like a little snack bar that we know of. Like they sell like raspas and, you know, all that stuff, the, the junk food and stuff. And so we had knew that guy for years. And we kind of told him like, hey, man, you know, would you be interested in helping us out uh, to put an event? And so he's like, yeah. So he's like, you know what, let's do it. You know, like I like the idea and everything. And so we ended up. We ended up uh, just giving away 300 toys, and uh, and it's crazy because I had I think like 200 dollars of donations, and everything else was out of you know my father's pockets or my pockets or my brothers, you know my family that we kind of you know as a unit kind of said you know what let's let's give back and let's let's you know Christmas is bigger than 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 us you know it, it's bigger than just you know giving gifts you know because there's those kids that don't have the the means or or the parents. Are, are you know either they pay bills or they or, or they give gifts you know and so i i was like you know what let's do it so and so i ended up just paying and my family paid and we all kind of pitched in and it was cool because my friend the one the shop the place he got a clown to go he got a moon bounce he got a band he had a food and then we had other people that donated food so we had wow. it for like six hours and dude, like the kids were happy. And it, I mean, it was just, it was really nice, man. I, I, it sucks that I couldn't do it last year because of the whole pandemic, you know? And so, you know, I'm hoping to kind of get back that, uh, get that back this year. It sounds like you have a lot of ideas and a lot of things that you want to execute in. Big respect to that champ, man. I, I really, I'm really touched by that story, man, because again, not that, you know, unfortunately, there's fighters out there that mm -hmm. don't even bother. Yeah, I mean, and, they and, don't even bother. And that um, was my thing was, uh, you know, sorry for interrupting. That was my biggest thing was I, I told my father, you know what? You know, I don't want to be that guy that that let's say he is getting money or, or is already well off and, and he forgets about where he came from. You know, I'm 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 always been a type of in a sense. Um, I've never forgotten where I'm where I'm from or where I came from or what I've had to do or, or 
you know, what my family's had to do to, to kind of progress in life. And so I've always said, you know what, like if I can give back at least a little, I can do, I'm going to do it. That's awesome, champ. Champ. So right now in San Antonio, you're over at the, the Luna boxing boxing facility Mm -hmm. tell us about how training camp is going over there and we'll get into of course what's next for you i mean it's going good man i feel uh it's crazy because i I feel my body feel you know feeling solid like i've told my coach for the past few days i was like dude like i feel solid like i feel strong and and uh and i can tell the progress i can see the progress within myself you know Uh i've always felt strong i've always felt uh, uh um fast but when you don't work out your muscles like they're supposed to, they stop working like they're supposed to. But when you start going back to, to what to you know getting them working again, then you, uh-huh. then everything starts coming back. And I feel like right now everything is coming back, and I, and I feel I feel great, man. I I couldn't ask for a better camp so far, and I'm just excited to just finish up the last month and get out there. So we're looking at you fighting in Orlando, Florida. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that. It's gonna be it's crazy because I I mean I went to a, a card in or in Orlando a few years back, I believe it was two years ago. And uh, in twenty nineteen I went to a card there and I saw I saw it, I liked it, and I was like, Man, like I was like I had told I had told my trainer and I was like, dude, they when when the they get Mexican fighters, but I wanna show them the the the, the the higher, the higher, how do you say the higher tier Mexican fighters? I want to show them that, hey, right. man, you know, like, you know, like just because you be up on Mexican fighters that are, that they do it for the money doesn't mean the rest of us are 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 the same thing, the same type of class. Like, no, you have some fighters that that tira awesome. yeah, ready to get, go, yeah, get tira yeah. and and I don't want to show them like, hey, you know, like like that, man, these dudes, these dudes can fight, you know, so. I'm I'm just excited. I'm super excited, and I'm I'm hoping to like get more fans and and you know, I build build my my following. Well, I'm gonna have the honor. I will be there ringside, of course, at your fight, and I'm gonna be shooting the photography for your fight night. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, finally watching you fight live. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm excited, man. I mean, like I've told you, I've I've heard of your page before, and I think you've posted about me. Uh, when I was fighting. Oh in yeah. Mexico. And, oh, yeah. you know, again, it, it was just, it, it's a, it's an honor, man. It's, it's really an honor. Cause you know, it's boxing. It opens up a lot of doors, you know, and sometimes there's doors that you would have never thought, you know, you would meet these people. And I've met, you know, some of my close friends, you know, I'm real good friends with Lamont Peterson, Anthony Peterson, uh, Rashid. Wow. Warren, you know what I'm saying? Like they're, I'm talking about like close friends. I call them right now. And they'll answer if I have a question, you know, I've, I'm, you know, and so, Never in a million years I would have thought that I would have known these guys, and, and I've gotten to train with them and, and spend time with them, go to their house and stuff. So it, it opens up a lot of doors, and I'm for me, I've always been grateful to to meet new people, to to have more yeah. experiences and meet new people. And you know, everybody you can always, you know, you you can always have a, you can either get help or have a helping hand or give a helping hand. So I mean, yeah, man, boxing has been it's been tremendous and i'm glad that you know i've met people and i've 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 um how do you say discovered new relationships that's awesome that's awesome yeah. i know when you come to florida there's gonna be a lot of work waiting for you yeah i mean it's a lot of there's a lot of good kids out here um in in the orlando Kissimmee area uh Bedufo, christopher diaz is yeah. out here uh christian camacho the son of hector macho camacho mm-hmm. He's out here. It's just a bunch of fighters all, all over the place um, that can definitely work with you. And and that's what they do. You know, yeah. uh, boxing is a serious sport. So, you know, a lot of these athletes do what they need to do and they get mm-hmm. in their camps and and they work very hard. So we're, we're definitely excited. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, no, I'm excited. Maybe hopefully one day, you know, get down to Florida and do a camp uh, and, and get the work in, man. I mean. At the end of the day, you know, like you said, uh, it's a, it's our job. And if they tell us, hey, you have to spar so and so, you gotta fight so and so, then that's gonna happen. You know, um, I mean, again, it would be it would be nice to kind of show them, like, hey, man, you can get you got Mexicans who can fight, not just those pichones que agarran de la, you know, de, de cualquier gimnasio. You know, that's what I've always told myself. I was like, I want to show everybody that, hey, you know, 
And, 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 and so that's that's basically it, man. You keep on punching, champ. Do me a favor. Tell all the fans how can they follow you on social media. I have uh, Instagram is uh, RD Cardenas. Uh, I think 15 or 6. RD Cardenas 15. Uh, and then um, Twitter is RD Cardenas 6. And then Facebook is Ramon Dinamita Cardenas. Uh, or you can add my fan page or you can add me. Uh, that's. I mean, that's basically it, man. I don't really mm-hmm. have... I was telling you earlier, you know, social media for me is not a big deal, but I, I do need to build it up. So if everybody could do me that favor. And like I said, RD Cardenas 15 or 6, either way. Well, definitely. You know, I mean, Champ, look, you know, as you continue to move up and, and do these great things in the sport and what have you, you know, the ones that are next to you, to your left, to your right, there's going to be people very close in your life that are going to be taking care of those things. Yeah, They're going to be handling your PR. They're going to be handling mm-hmm. your photos. They're going to be handling your schedule. And all you need to do is do exactly what you're doing now. It's getting ready yeah. for a fight. You know, that's that's what yeah. it's all about. Yeah, and, I, and you know, I want to, you know, thank you for having me. Uh, thank Eric. Uh, thank Amari. Thank Henry. Thank Barry. Thank uh, Box Lab, Box Lab Management, HB Sports Entertainment. I want to thank my family back in DC. Uh, Patrick, all my friends, Patrick, Keyshawn, everybody. Uh, you know, for all, all the help, because like I told you earlier, man, the 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 road to to be where I'm at now has has been nothing but but you know, it hasn't been easy. Uh, you know, fighting in Mexico, not being able to fight in general, and and, and then um, not having a solid, per se, like a promoter behind me to kind of help me. It's just been been me and my father for years, and until I hooked up with with uh, you know, box lab and HB Sports, and now you know things are going things are going better. Let's put it that way. Things are things are finally flowing how they're supposed to. You know what I'm saying? And um. And then it's the whole pandemic, dude. I mean, the pandemic really yeah. just kind of, uh, it really ruined a lot of stuff. You know, I'm not going to complain about it because people lost way more than me. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, oh, it ruined my life because, you know, uh, you know, everything in my family was good. Everybody got through it. And people who got it got through it. And, you know, but. Uh, Gracias a Dios. Yeah. And so, right. you know, it, it's just, again, you know, I'm just ready to get back on the road, man. Get ready to start fighting again. And, and hopefully my goal is to my goal is to hit 118 this year i went i went to go check my bmi and and they said that i that i would be that i would be okay to to drop down to 118 and that's my plan uh, i've already talked to you know everybody and i told them hey, you know my plan is to kind of drop to 118 and and not just be i want to be a multi-divisional champion you know i don't want to be just a awesome. uh, uh, one champion and that's it you know i want to try to drop 118 22 26 and 30 if I can get up to one, if I can get up to 140, man, I would try to do 140. I highly doubt it. I'm too, you know, I'm not, I'm not big. You know, I would have to do a lot of weights, but I'm trying to be at least a multi divisional champion. Ramon, in 2021, you have any idea um, as far as how many fights you want or where you need to be this year? I would hope to get at least, I would say like four, just to kind of, because I'm, you know, I've taken off. Not because I've wanted to, but more than a year uh, off. And then, um, you know, like I told you, I got sick and stuff. So that's still kind of, I'm not going to tell you it. it's going to bother me. But I would like to see how I would feel, you know, because maybe that, maybe the whole COVID thing kind of ruined me or, or not ruined me, but ruined my lungs in a sense, you know, stuff like that. So I'm, I want to try to fight as many as I can this year and, and next year I start hunting for titles you know what i'm saying uh hunt for the champions at either 118 22 or or 20 even 26 i can i can go up to 26 but i'm just trying to kind of in a sense solidify myself this year and say oh man there's a there's a kid that he's he's ready for whoever and then the following year say okay you know i'm ready for whoever you know like line them up and, and we'll fight you know awesome awesome give a shout out to your fans I right, give a shout out to everybody back in, like I told you, in DC, in San Antonio, in Monterrey, um, and I hope that you'll be watching us on live. There'll be a live stream, right? It'll be a live stream. We're definitely gonna put this stream on YouTube. You go on Latin Box YouTube and subscribe, and you can see the full interview. Okay, yeah, you can do me that favor and do me and my man Damon that favor. Hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Hit that share button, 
I uh, just want to thank you again, Damon, for having me on the show, man. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Thank you, champ. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Keep on right. punching. All right. Sounds good, man. All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you guys for tuning in the Slip Punches show. We appreciate you coming on tonight with us with, with Raymond Candanales. Great young kid. Uh, big things to come for him. We'll be back tomorrow night with another show. And once again, uh, we thank you on behalf of Lightbox Sports. Yeah, everybody have a good night.